getting my name filled in on those letters of transit. But you're getting on that plane with Victor where you belong. But what about us? We'll always have Prague. You mean Paris? How do you know about Paris? It's where we met. Oh, right. Paris, France. When I say Prague, that's weird. Never been. Rick! How long do you expect me to wait for you? Well, until your contract expires. You know that's not what I mean. You told me five minutes. I've been lying in your bed wearing nothing but the swastika earrings you gave me for the past hour. You've been banging this barman behind my back? That's not the only back he's been banging behind. Paris? What are you doing here? I just got the last plane from Prague. Something told me I couldn't trust my husband to love me and only me till death do us part. You're married? To a woman in Paris? That's right. He liked Paris so much he put a ring on it. On the wrong finger. He obviously didn't like it that much. I'm dyslexic. Rick. Are you ever planning on seeing your child? You have a kid? There's no proof that baby's mine. He is looking at me. A kid. Hey, Rick. I thought you wanted me to play Misty on your balls. You're gay? Baby, once you've had a black penis, you stay bent. Look, Elsa, I'm no good at being noble. No shit. But I think this is the beginning of a beautiful orgy. <laughs> Vex, do you know why Schindler's List won Best Picture in 93? Great story, great script, great acting, great direction, great cinematography, great music. No, Vex, it's because it was in black and white. Although the version I've seen had a glitch. One of the background characters appeared red in a couple of scenes. Remind me not to get Steven Spielberg in to personally oversee our Blu-ray transfer? Yeah, I'll make a note. So you want to turn the void black and white now? Straight to business as always. I've told you to stop that. But yes, along with the exemplary writing, directing, and social hyping, sucking the colour out of the void will make a sure-fire Oscar bait. Tell Ed to start looking for a black and white camera. Wait, you want to reshoot everything we've shot? No. I want the void to come shrink-wrapped with a black and white TV. Fix! We have to make those Academy voters weaken the lines with lashings of grayscale! No, 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 no. We don't have to reshoot anything. I can just apply a black and white filter to the existing footage. Apply a filter? Last time I applied a filter to my drinking water, enough contaminants seeped through to cost me, and subsequently Wilton, a kidney. Trust me, you won't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> what? What in our 18 years together gives you the impression that I trust you? <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> Why don't you go back to the compound and apply your magic filter to the footage from yesterday's shoot and then show it to me. If the results meet with my savagely hypercritical standards, then we don't have to reshoot the entire 18 years of footage. I'll go do it right now. Uh, remember, it isn't Steven Spielberg you're trying to impress. It's me. So up your game. Hey, Fex, glad you're here. Hey, Fex, glad you're here. Can't talk, but you just talked. I know those footfalls. Can't talk, he said to say can't talk. Can't talk. Can't talk! Oh, best dream of my life. Now to do 18 seconds of work to save us from 18 years of hell. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The memory card, it's gone. The memory card, gone. But my memory of the card, clear as a winter's morning on the surface of the moon.
dress is stuck. Can you help me? I'm coming. Please hold for Mr. Bugansky. Talk to me. Boss, it's me. Listen. There's been a slight hitch in the plan. I'll have to convite some other footage for inspection. Why? What's wrong with yesterday's shoot? Well, the memory card appears to have been temporarily misplaced. Now you listen here, you butterfingered flatfoot. I want that memory card permanently unmisplaced. Or well, the next hitch you'll experience will be a noose around your neck. Peace. Don't get your tweed in a tangle. Well, I'll find the card. I just figured I could show you a different scene is all. How's this for a scene? Seven of us reshooting 18 years worth of footage, all because you couldn't hold on to an itsy bitsy memory card. And be advised, I'll have no option but to inform everybody who's to blame. I'm on the case. <sighs> Punk. I had to find that cat or my future was as bleak as a Zambian buffet. There was no doubt in my mind except that associated with canned cheeseburgers. Someone on the team had stolen the cat. But who? And why? And when, where, how, what, which and wherefore art? This would be my toughest assignment yet, with more suspects than a Mr. Univoice contest caught dispensing syringes specifically designed for injecting steroids into chest muscles. Is that a pistol in my neck or is your aim just sloppy? I should have known it was you. I bet there was something on that card you didn't want anyone to see. So you snuck in here after the shoot, stole the card, erased the unfavorable material, and are just now returning to the spot where you found it. Or should I say stole it? You're giving me far too much or far too little credit, mister. I don't know nothing about no stolen card. Then you wouldn't object to an invasive body cavity search. Well, what other reason could there be for objecting to having my privates pried open and eyed? By a private eye. Oh. And why would I take your little card anyways? All the memory I need is right up here. In Technicolor. I don't know, sugar. Maybe you thought your acting wasn't up to snuff. And by snuff, I mean dying on camera. If we are ever to escape the void, we must look inside ourselves and... and... Oh, fiddlesticks! I can't remember the lines because I'm a big, stupid, dumb bum with too much hair. Buster, I never give a bad performance. I know I always leave you satisfied. Don't play games with me, Luscious. Why did you come here? See? All you had to do was ask. Truth is, Casey was concerned about makeup continuity and asked me to inquire on her behalf. It's a crying shame that card's gone missing. I was curious to see for myself if her fears were founded. Not as curious as Casey, though. Maybe you should talk to her? A neat story, but I'd heard more reliable testimony from biblical serpents. I wouldn't trust Lou to recite Little Bo Peep without accusing someone of stealing the sheep. She'd never go on an errand for Casey. That'd be like the queen hobbling down to the corner store to pick up a pack of smokes for Prince Harry. With one small difference. Casey is clean. As clean as a whistle. Still. Even the cleanest whistle can get blown by a dirty mouth. How's about a cupcake, a cookie, and a cup of caffeine with a dollar for cream? Save the cream for the handcuffed burns, cupcake, because this is how the cookie crumbles. <gasps> Randomly, as you'd expect. Breaking biscuits! How could you use such ruthless interrogation techniques on a frail woman? Could a frail woman lift a 64 gigabyte memory card? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm a God-fearing, child-rearing, man by standing Christian housewife. But like all housewives, you got desperate. Desperate to conceal the fact that your makeup was mucked up. You worked left to right, but on Friday's shoot you didn't finish, giving Lou the appearance of a duplicitous Batman villain. Gustav was too far away to notice, but the second he gets a look at that footage, the jig is up. So you stole the cad, crushed it into nougat-sized pieces, and baked them into a memory chip cookie. It was a sly move sending Lou to inquire about the footage and establish a false alibi. But I saw through it like Beyonce's dress of the Grammys. 
What are you talking about? I didn't speak to that lubricious tramp. Yes, I was concerned about the makeup symmetry, but I would never break the Eighth Commandment. Besides, what's the point in destroying the footage? We always end up reshooting most scenes anyway. But if the footage is unusable due to one person's mistake, Gustav doesn't pay that person for the entire week and he makes sure the rest of the team knows exactly who to blame for the reshoot. Footage goes missing, however. That blame falls squarely on me and no one ever has to know about the Phantom of the Opera. How brutish! I had no idea about Gustav's vindictive approach to damage control. I only joined the team a few weeks ago, as you well know. Wait! I'm remembering something from the shoot. Just after Gustav called Rath, I was taking my gear back to the car. No, no, no. No, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. She sounded highly distressed. I don't know what that means, but if it helps your investigation, I see no harm in selling Millie down the river. What could have made Millie so upset? The list was long. She's more fragile than a crystal champagne flute at a convention for airport baggage handlers. Seemed I was right about Lou, though. Or perhaps I was wrong about Casey. But something stank worse than a public toilet in Thailand. I had to get back to the office and clear my head by submerging it in a bucket of cerebral decongestant. <laughs> Ransacking for something? Oh, no, I was just looking for you, Mr. Fex. Well, I got news for you, money bags. Even during my years as a circus contortionist, I was never skilled enough to cram myself into a three-inch deep desk drawer. Oh, oh you've caught me grey-handed, Mr. Fex. I wanted to be the big hero by finding the missing memory card. I figure something goes missing. It's usually in the most obvious place, right? God knows we don't want to have to reshoot any of this film. That's very thoughtful of you. No luck, I take it. Nope, it's good and gone. But don't beat yourself up over it, why things go missing all the time. Why me? I'm always misplacing large envelopes stuffed with 100% clean, non-sequential, untraceable cash. I just leave them lying about and completely forget about them. It's one of my quirks. I've come to embrace it. As to your predicament, well, if this memory card was destined never to be found ever again, ever, until the end of time, well, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, would it? How'd you know the card was missing? Ah, you're pretty adept at catching out an honest schmo and a lie. You're pretty adept at getting caught in one for an honest schmo. Let's see. If you took the card yourself, you wouldn't be searching for it. Unless you're playing a cunning game in misdirection, and I don't think you're that cunning. Which leaves one possibility. You were the one outside my door eavesdropping on my phone call with Gustav. Which explains the tumble pubes stuck to the soles of your shoes, present only at this end of the corridor, where vacuuming has been egregiously neglected of late. So, I was wandering past when you were on the phone. What could I have heard? The part about reshooting 18 years worth of footage. And that's exactly what you want, isn't it, Wilton? Well, why would anyone want that? Because the void is the only thing in your life. Without it, you're nothing. And you worship the ground Gustav Hawks his phlegm on. You want that footage to disappear to prolong the void as much as possible. Which is also why you sabotage Friday's shoot by ruining Lou's makeup. Time's up, Casey. We have a schedule to stick to. Lou, on set now, please. <laughs> oh, please don't tell anyone I'll give you anything you want. Money, power, women. I don't want your dirty money or your ill-gotten power. Send me a brochure on the women. Listen to me. I know who stole the card. It was Ed. What makes you say that? Well, didn't you see him on Friday? He so hopped up on caffeine, his hands were shaking the whole time. <laughs> Most of the shoot was handheld. You do the math. Lies within lies within whispered half-truths. No one I could trust. Wilton is slimier than a tree frog in a bucket of chicken fat, but he seemed innocent of stealing the cad. Unless he was more cunning than I thought he was. Time to get a sound bite from the sound girl. I just hoped her teeth weren't sharper than her wits. Bonjour, detective. Spring cleaning. Evidently. Or sprung cleaning up evidence. Sacré bleu, what are you saying? Drop the charade, Cherie, or do I have to sound it out for you? To the words, there's nothing there, ring any bells? Merde. Casey overheard you after Friday's shoot. Let me tell you what I think it means. I think you checked your equipment on your way to your car and realized you set it to the wrong input. Ergo, no sound had been recorded. Today, the memory card with the footage mysteriously disappears. Go inky dink. 
Oh, I applaud your active imagination, detective. But c'est tout. Why would I steal footage if the problem is with sound? Because if the footage goes missing, the shoot is automatically a fail. I get all the blame and no one ever knows about the missing audio. I regret to burst your balloon, detective. But you are bucking up incorrect trees. The reason I say these words is because Ed was just trying to ask me out again and I was simply telling him I no longer had feelings for him. Really, I want to have sex again. Can we just get back together? find me very alluring. Curse my foreign sexiness. How fortuitous. I'm on my way to visit Ed right now. It'll be interesting to see if he wishes to corroborate you. You wish to corroborate me on Friday behind the maintenance shed, but I said no. Time will tell, mademoiselle. I think I know who stole your little chip. What do you know? You're just a sound recordist. Which means I hear things. This costume's riding up my crack. Why does Jessie the cowgirl from Toy Story make me so horny? Things people don't want other people to know. Nothing is ever perfectly clean. And some things are downright dirty. Of course, it would be against my nature to divulge such things to a third party. Perhaps my good friends Unipon and Cohen can loosen your lips. Who? They're the people on Australian banknotes. It's 50 bucks. Lou was saying the wrong lines of dialogue. The hell you say? I swear it's true. If you can't trust the French, who can you trust? Millie hears a lot, but she couldn't hear the quaver in her own voice. She wasn't telling the whole truth and nothing but. Before I asked Ed to corroborate her ass, I had to know something. It's open. Evening, detective. Make yourself comfortable. I'm just changing out of my work clothes. Didn't realize there was clothing in your line of work. Well, they shouldn't take long, then should it? To what do I owe the pleasure? To a testimony given by one Millie, surname unknown, claiming you spoke the wrong lines of dialogue on Friday's shoot, incidentally affording you a clear motive to steal the footage, which, incidentally, has been stolen. And how could I say the wrong words without everyone on set noticing? Nobody reads the script except for you and Millie. Gustav has changed the words so many times, even he doesn't know what you're meant to be saying. I admit that in the past I haven't always bothered to learn the latest draft. No one ever accused me of being a good girl. But Gustav's never noticed before, so... Why should I be worried this time? Maybe you realize you play with fire too many times and your fingers are overdue a burn. There's a lot of things my fingers are overdue. I don't hear a denial. If Millie's so sure I said the wrong words, why didn't she play you back the audio from the shoot? Could it be that she has no audio to play back? I know you lied about talking to Casey. She had no idea about the consequences for spoiling one of Gustav's shoots. That's funny. I'm surprised she forgot so quickly after I told her all about it on Friday night. Especially since it seemed to concern her an awful lot. You two better stick to your stories. If I find out there's a conspiracy here, I'm gonna blow the lid off it like a tin of Pringles and once I pop, I just can't stop. That's just the way I like it. Of course, if you don't trust me, you could always handcuff me to the bed. The number of conflicting accounts was climbing like a hydrangea vine in extremely nutritious soil. I had one last stop on the road to justice. And it ain't no picnic stop. Whoa, hey, detective. So nice of you to drop in on a notes like this. I take it this is just a social call. You call this social? I call this sodded. What? I haven't touched a drop of liquor since my uncle died of a heart attack. It wasn't alcohol related, but it did put me on the straight and narrow. Not liquor jabber. You've been dealing brown magic on set. You come into my space and call me a bean pusher? You don't just push the barista candy, you're hooked on it. You're shaking like a leaf in a grass up a terrarium. That's why you stole the footage, because you knew it looked like it was shot by a flea on a trampoline. You're a mocha latte Starbuck and dirt blower. That's a load of hooey. I'm shaking because I got a fever. It only just came out about an hour ago. <coughs> ah, I see. And this must be where you keep the medicine. Those have been there for ages. Suppose these haven't been worse in ages. I did some impromptu gardening this morning. Try new things, but it wasn't for me.
I'm telling you, you won't find a single speck of the devil's dingleberry dust in this one. Oh! Okay, look, all right, I admit it. I have a bit of a problem, but I'm cleaning myself up. I wasn't gulping the Crystal Columbia on Friday, I swear! Is that the lie you told Millie when you propositioned her after the shoot? I guess she didn't buy it either. After? Is that what she said? Look, I did ask her out, and I did get rejected, but it was before the shoot, not after. I ask her out at the start of every shoot. I like to get it out of the way so I can focus on the next 18 hours. Come to think of it, I did see something mighty suspicious right after that. As I was going to get the camera, I saw Wilton fiddling with Millie's sound gear. I remember thinking, that's odd, because Wilton doesn't deal with sound. He mainly deals with groveling. Everyone was pointing fingers at everyone else. It was like a group of mimes in a Mexican standoff. There was nothing to do now, but... You got a thing for throwing ladies up against walls, don't you? You ain't no lady. You're slinking around this house like a back alley stray on the prowl for a blind mouse with a broken leg. I've half a mind to grab you by the scruff of your mangy neck and kick you to the gutter. Oh, I love it when you talk animal cruelty. You a cat lover, mister? I was always more of a dog man. I reckon if you rubbed my back and made me purr, I could change your mind about that. And wait for me to drop my gad just long enough for you to sink your claws in. I ain't falling for you, girly. Oh, but I think you are. Oh. Shame on you. Taking advantage of me when I'm vulnerable. You're about as vulnerable as a vertical cliff. Mmm, but so much softer. So did you figure out who pinched your little friend? Yes, I did. And now it's time to round up the usual gun coming out of the coat suspects. <laughs> I've turned this house upside down, inside out, and back to front. The memory card is but a memory. Was it a lone culprit, or was it a conspiracy? Every answer I obtained raised its own questions. Every corner I turned just led to deeper and darker corners. Until finally, like a team of highly skilled synchronized masturbation performance artists, it all came together. And the solution was right here on this. Keep your eyes on the screen, for when I insert this card, you'll all know the truth the same as I. There was no conspiracy. The thief acted alone. Through a highly sophisticated process of elimination and deduction, I have reached the inevitable conclusion that the perpetrator was, and always has been... Oh, here it is! The memory card was in your computer the whole time? Yeah, I remember now. I put it in my computer after the shoot because I was just about to watch it back. But then I got distracted when Lou asked me to help her with a zipper on her dress. <laughs> that old trick. Hey, Fax, can you fix a zipper on this dress? It's busted. Oh, why does it smell like vomit? Take a guess. So what's on the USB? Oh, it's just my high school graduation video. I actually had no idea who did it. I just thought if I put it in the computer, the culprit would, you know, break down and confess. Oh, God! Well, it was right about one thing. Action! Yikes, that's really shaky. I was probably drinking too much coffee that day. I got a real problem. Mmm, the spaghetti is so delicious. What the hell? That can't be the right dialogue. It's not. I didn't learn the new lines. I just repeated what I'd memorized from an earlier version when the scene was set in a restaurant. Is it wheat-free? I can't eat gluten. The, the makeup is only on one half of your face! I knew it! That's why I asked Lou to steal the card. Which I would have done if Fex hadn't convinced me someone else had gotten to it first. The computer's the first place I would have checked. I thought about stealing it too. As soon as I realised that no sound had recorded because the mic was connected to the wrong input. There was nothing there. Yes, yeah, sorry about that, Mill. I just wanted us to reshoot that one scene. But when I found out it was going to be 18 years of reshoots, I had to try harder to bury that card. So all my motives were correct, except no one had the chance to commit the actual crime. Hey, Gustav. Uh, look, I know where you're calling, and here's the thing. I couldn't find the card. So, I won't be able to turn the footage black and white. And, uh, if it's my fault, I accept full responsibility. Black and white? I'm not interested in that anymore. 
It's a bit wanky. Plus, it'll rob the film of all its vibrancy. And who wants that? But I have been thinking about those filters you mentioned, and I've decided I now want the complete opposite of black and white. I want all colour. Even the areas that would have been black and white. If it's black, make it pink. If it's white, make it teal. And if it's grey, make it shamrock. It's going to be a whole new colour style. I'm calling it Gustachrome. Oh, and I want to reshoot all the footage from the last 18 years as well. Oh well, all's well that ends well. The evidence before me all points to another episode of The Void. One with more blood and bullets than a Red Cross rally at a firing range in Wyoming. There is no way I'm attending <laughs> the starts idea of a boot camp. Welcome to boot camp, maggots. Training starts now. I've been shot! We have to escape. I'm making a run for it. We're all gonna die!